So, as we already had the first introduction, we are just going to to start with Eduardo, Eduardo Sarabia. Hello, hello. Um, I, um, I have two works in the exhibition. Um, well, um, just to start, as everybody else did, um, I am not from Guadalajara. Um, I, I uh, grew up in Los Angeles, uh, and my family is from Sinaloa, northern part of Mexico. And I went to Guadalajara uh, about 20 years ago. Um, I got invited to work at a ceramic factory that we all kind of done projects with. And, um, and I thought I would be there for three months and then just kind of like move along. And you know, 20 years later, I'm still there working. Um, it's been a great experience to work and to develop projects there. I um, because of these, you know, these backgrounds um, in LA and growing up in Los Angeles and um, having Mexican descent and, you know, traveling to Mexico, but being American, I always feel like I have this kind of like um, bicultural experience uh, within the border. So my work has to do a lot uh, with me growing up, uh, with memories, how we construct memories, how, um, how we construct our lives based on memories, although, you know, either they could be facts or fictions. We just kind of, you know, we create our, our reality. Um, the, I'll start with the mural. Um, I got the opportunity to paint something on, this, on those buildings that are across the street. And I, you know, growing up in Los Angeles, the neighbors would paint vines outside their houses. Um, and it was kind of a way to deflect uh, gangs from graffitiing their walls. Um, so I always kind of thought it was an interesting way of how you can appropriate and make something kind of beautiful at the same time. Um, so it's, it's something I like doing for exhibitions. I like kind of setting this, pa this space where I appropriate the walls of a museum and kind of hang works on top of them. Um, specifically for that, I really love the, 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 the vertical tower. So it just kind of felt like this kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk kind of going into the sky and, and, and having this kind of narrative um, uh, with the work. Um, I, I wanted to work with, with a local artist, um, Tank, um, Sergio Hernandez, who's amazing. Um, he's a street artist, graffiti, and we worked together to, to, to paint the building, to finish the mural. Um, I was here last week, and then I left, and then I came back. Um, and um, So you guys should check it out when you leave the museum. Um, and through these kind of like growing up and through these storytelling, um, I got really, I liked, I, I got um, really into um, telling these narratives in ceramics. And, and these specifically, um, I wanted to reference things that uh, were personal to me and how I grew up and just kind of being, um, you know, like visiting my grandparents, the stories and the, the stories they shared. And I remember, um, I think most, um, the ceramics were made of my height, my width, um, and they were specifically made just to do this kind of um, uh, personalized storytelling. Uh, my, graf my grandfather spent most of his time looking for a buried treasure in Sinaloa. And I remember uh, when I would go to, to visit him, he would tell us, uh, he would tell me, nobody else really cared, everybody thought he was crazy. Um, but I remember like being uh, just really into his the stories and the, and the treasure and and, and he, went to, um, he went to look at it many times. And I felt like, and when he passed away, um, my father called me and he said, hey, um, you know, they're looking through, you know, we're just kind of cleaning out all his stuff. Um, there's all these like maps and, uh, and notes about the treasure, do you want them? And I was like, yes, of course I want them. And, and I kind of like ended up inheriting this search for this treasure for my grandfather. Um, so it's, it's kind of like an ongoing project. Um, every once in a while I try to spend some time on it. It's, um, it's, it's in the middle, it's in Sinaloa, between Mazatlan and, and, and Culiacán, which is a very dangerous part, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really advised to travel there. So I try to, um, but I, like, I try to go as much as I can, but, I, but more than anything, it's just these stories, like, with, you know, with the, like this relationship that I have with my family. And, um, and, and, and this idea or this kind of dream of finding this amazing treasure that my grandfather was looking for. So a lot of, so the vases downstairs have that reference to them. Um, they, 
they, I, I pair the vases with, um, with uh, wood boxes, and the wood boxes is, I like this idea of how things kind of move across the border and how things are hidden, and, um, and, and this idea of contraband. So these ideas and these stories are placed inside the boxes, and they kind of like move back and forth. Um, and um, the, the companies or the uh, products they represent is also um, things from my childhood. Um, I grew up right next to a Farmer John um, uh, warehouse, so I just kind of remember the smell of it. Um, that's just kind of a, a funny thing. And, uh, and when we would drive to, through Sinaloa to Mazatlan, there's a town called Huamuchil, uh, and um, we have an ant there that I really liked. So. So there's like these little kind of like ideas and these little references kind of come out in the work and then, um, and it's, it's just uh, storytelling. So, um, um, so yes, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> Thank you, Eduardo. Francisco Ugarte. Uh, I'm Francisco, I'm from Guadalajara. Uh, uh, I am an architect. I studied architecture, and so my work deals a lot with, um, with space and perception. And for this exhibition, I have two pieces. One is um, this uh, photograph of a, an intervention I made in the Casa Barragan house, invited by Viviana Curi, curated the, uh, the exhibition. Um, so I wanted to make... <clears throat> an intervention that deals with all the, the experience of the house, not only one, one, one space or something. So my first idea was to get rid of all the objects of the house, all, all the furniture, so you can see the house um, empty, like a, uh, to see the architecture for itself. So. That wasn't going to be possible, so my, my next uh, idea was to cover all the objects with, with this foil so that um, it becomes more like uh, sculptures or it, and it reflects the, the light of the house itself. <clears throat> and also, I wanted to focus the attention more to the, to the perception of the space, not so much uh, of the objects, because Barra, uh, when you go to the Casa Barragan, um, you feel, uh, I mean, they tell you that Barragan used to read in this uh, chair at four o'clock in the afternoon. And so these are this, this, there are all these stories about Barragan and you don't actually see the, um, the house so much, no? And the, the other piece, well, is a, is a similar piece as the one in the photograph. I call these pieces um, drawings, uh, and I see them like drawings in three dimension, like lines. So what I do is I analyze the space where they're gonna be uh, put, and uh, I like the idea that the, the, the steel beams relate to the space. So the form um, is like a, a sum of the, the, the beams and the space itself, the space itself. Um, um, I think that's it. Thank you. Julieta Beltran. Hi, um, I'm Julieta. I'm, I also wasn't born in Guadalajara, but I grew up there, so I consider myself uh, from Guadalajara, and my family has been there for many, many years. Um, and my work is also about family and about memory. And so I started... Um, collecting photographs that people would send. I studied abroad. I was um, in Rhode Island when I was doing my undergrad, and I was really feeling nostalgic for Mexico. I was really missing um, the warmth of the people, being around other people, and it was a moment of like a coming of age moment. So I got these photos of my grandma when she was in her 20s, um, and it was really striking for me to see just kind of what she was doing then versus what my life was at that moment. And to paint her, it felt like a way to like honor her or just to have her close. Um, so I've been working with these photographs and then just expanded the archive by also grabbing other people's family photos or things that I see online on Instagram. Um, because I found very interesting that I was kind of trying to do an autobiography that was 
also like um, Eduardo said, sort of like some parts are fiction, some parts are actually like what happened in your family history. Um, and then having all these photos from other people that I saw myself reflected in. Um, and I started using fragments kind of like as a breakup from the photograph because I felt like if I was painting the whole picture, it was just more focused on like replicating a photo. Whereas if I was doing a fragment, I could just focus on the moment that I was the most interested or a gesture or find different ways of representing a person that's not focused on just kind of like getting the likeliness of their face. Um, and then I kind of got an obsession with hands. So a lot of the fragments that I'm choosing have to do with this like body postures and language that tells you the relationship between people, the how close they are to each other or just ways of expressing. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been a lot about just like that translation. And I kept coming back to painting, even though it was like maybe one of the most traditional like art forms. Um, because for me, it was a way of having like a slow down process of how I'm intaking information. Like I think a lot of the images were in Instagram or different sources where you just scroll and you don't really like take the time to really see something. Um, and to me, painting is a, a moment of translation of, and of just like meditation with whatever image you're taking on. Um, so all the work that I've been doing in these past like four years, um, two since I've been back in Guadalajara, have to do with these moments of translation and of looking at these different relationships and kind of thinking of the politics of care. And like, um, I think a lot of Mexican families have matriarchal figures that just kind of carry all the all the attention and the caring for other people. Um, and in my family, it felt like that case. So I, the photos that you'll see, or I mean, the paintings that you'll see in the gallery were all from my grandma, who is kind of like the pillar figure in my family. And yeah, so to me, it's been really special to just kind of like been, to bring her with me um, along these things and to be invited to these spaces, but just have kind of like a moment to acknowledge them. Um, but yeah, I think it's also the fragment, like it's a very personal thing. It's, I'm choosing a medium that I think will just keep growing as my family develops. And um, to have a fragment also allows for other people to interact with it and not just, because at some point I was like, who cares if I'm painting my grandmother or like the story is relevant to me, but not necessarily to everyone. And by choosing fragments, I think people can just project their stories and see that it's about like, these familial relationships and what's happening on the inside um, of a household. And I think in Guadalajara, we're like very proud of our families or just, we, we spend a lot of time in like terraces and the weather's always very nice. So to me, it was like a way to capture the city through the people that inhabited. But yeah, I mean, it's very brief, but that's what I've been making. Thank you very much, Julieta. Renata Peterson. Hi. Hi, yeah, there. Um, I'm Renata. I was born in Guadalajara. I studied in Mexico City, in La Esmeralda, and then came back because of the ceramic factory Eduardo was talking about. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about the piece that is in the museum, which is this Limpieza Karmática Express. This piece started from an, like an anecdote, I saw a store in, in a town called Chapala that said, clean your place, limpia tu hogar. And it was esoterical products and chemical products. And I thought it was really funny, like how they had quartz and candles and stuff like that, but then they had like chloro, sote, pinol. So uh, I thought it was so funny for, for like the store to attribute esoterical properties to an industrial produced chemical. So, um, so that's like how it started. And then I thought of doing it as a scatter piece because it's a very minimalistic type of, of piece. I think Robert Morris started them and then Richard Serra did one and then Carl Andre did one in the, like in the 60s. And so I thought I, I, I wanted to subvert like these kind of pieces by doing 
it with something that is very attributed to like domestic life, and usually domestic life is taken care by ladies in Mexico at least. So I wanted to to make it like a kind of like a domestic loop uh, in this form in a scatter piece. So yes, that's it. Thank you, Renata. Cynthia Gutierrez, please. Hi. Um, well, I'm also from Guadalajara, live in Guadalajara. Um, I studied at the university uh, in Guadalajara visual arts with an orientation in sculpture. For the exhibition, I have a work titled No Pertenecemos a la Misma Tierra, uh, We Don't Belong to the Same Earth. Um, and, uh, well, in general, my work um, talks about identity, memory. Um, I am interested in how uh, national identities are built, um, imposed memory. So um, monuments have played an important role in my work. Um, the pedestal is an important element in my work. So in, uh, in this case, at first sight, uh, when you enter the exhibition uh, space, you see uh, three white uh, pedestals or plinths, and then, um, but they have nothing on top. They're not carrying or supporting a, an object or a sculpture. And in this case, um, you see th uh, a water vessel made in ceramic that is um, upside down, and it's supporting the, the pedestal or balancing it so it can stand. Um, and for me, this uh, sort of uh, clash and dialogue between um, modernity and tradition is important in this work. The, the water vessels are uh, made by an artisan from Tonalá, which is a region near to Guadalajara, um, called José Isabel Pajarito Fajardo. And um, this, is, uh, this technique is called barro canelo, and it uh, has been uh, passing from generations. It's, uh, there's, you know, these uh, family, very, um, yeah, a family shops normally at their homes. Um, and the, the veins of this uh, particular earth, uh, reddish earth that they use, or clay that they use to decorate, um, is, is being invaded by concrete. So the artisans have to uh, move further away to find it. So it's also, I, I, I wanted also to talk about uh, territory and, and earth and our relation to earth and how sometimes it seems that we, um, we don't belong to it or we all inhabited it but in, in different ways so we don't all belong to the same earth. Um, and from this work to, to raise some questions about um, uh, how things are displayed in a museum or art itself or how we validate objects or how we present objects that are um, displaced from their context. Um, yes, and, and how we relate to Earth and to each other in a way. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And the last one, Carmen Wizard. We're sharing the microphone. <laughs> Uh, my name is Carmen, and as you heard, most of the artists are from Guadalajara, but I am not from Guadalajara, Viviana is <laughs> uh, I grew up in a small town of the state of Jalisco, at the north of the state, that it's called Colotlan. It's 20,000 inhabitants. Um, I grew up, grew up there, uh, until I was 18 years old, and I moved to Mexico City to do my BFA in La Esmeralda. And we, in, it was a radical change, like from 20,000 inhabitants to more than 20 million inhabitants. And so I started thinking about how, how people, how I can um, 
feel like the space, the time, how these concepts change in every place. And since I live in Mexico City, I keep going to Colotlan to visit my parents and to, to do my production. And I was thinking about um, which images do you have access depending your context. Like this series is called New Collection of Contemporary Painting. Art is viewer specific, not site specific. And this is related to what's your uh, visual education. Um, I was thinking about what kind of images did I have access when I grow up. Like, there are not a lot of images validated as are around. Even if you have internet, it, it is not the same to, to look at uh, an art piece through a screen and being in front of an art piece. And uh, in one of my visits, I started doing a visual archive of photographs of surfaces like walls or the floor or doors that I found, uh, like that I think that they ha that these surfaces has like pictori pictorial um, characteristics, and I was thinking also that painting is really important the the materials to to look at. Uh, the materiality of painting, so it's like uh, something with humor too, like I have access to these kind of paintings when I grow up. And I don't know, uh, for example, the first image is uh, a small tiendita de la esquina, I don't know how you say that in English, corner store. Uh, and well, there are there were two moments. Uh, well, when when I was walking on the streets of Colotlan and taking these pictures, and also thinking about painting as walking and observing and framing, um, and imagine how these images uh, were constructed. Like maybe someone painted this wall like three years ago, and then someone came and put a, 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 spray, a spray painting on it, and then the rain um, have an action in that materiality and in that image. So in the case of the first image, it was a, a corner store, and I, I guess they painted the, the wall, the, the facade, but they didn't take off the, the Coca-Cola, publicity and I don't know how, I don't know, I think that after they painted, they took them off and and that's why the, the white squares, like the ghost of the Coca-Cola uh, publicity, I don't know if I am explaining <laughs> that well. But yes, um, what, what, what else could I say? Um, it's a, a, a bigger archive of images. Uh, the second moment was to, to imagine how I could reproduce these effects in, in my own paintings, like the, the effect of the rain or the dust or the the time, mm, it's a characteristic of, uh, I think that a small town, that images can happen, because when you live in a city, well, at least at Mexico City, in the center of the city, everything's really well, uh, well, they, they care of the buildings or the, pa the painting of the facades, so there's not a lot um, happening there because everything's like new and it's just um, recently painted. 
Mm, but in this kind of, of uh, in colored land, this kind of facades or walls, there are a lot of of history or I don't know. They painted this 70, 70 years ago. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. I have a question for everyone. How does uh, working in Guadalajara has made your your work um, different or which unique characteristic you can find by working in Guadalajara in the case of Carmen in Colotlan? Do you find that the city has uh, made your work uh, be in a certain way or not? And the, kind of the second part of the question would be, why would it be important to be exhibiting in, in Oklahoma City? What do you expect the, the public, the audience, to, to get from the exhibition, to get from your work, and to get from the exhibition as a whole? Is it clear? I'll start. Um, to answer the first question, um, you know, I I kind of had already an arts background. I um, I grew up drawing and painting, um, and um, and went to art school in Los Angeles. So when I came to Guadalajara and I saw this kind of amazing magical uh, place to produce, um, it was kind of a like a no brainer, really, like um, uh, of just kind of like a producing producing and making objects. Um, I was 25 at the time. I, I was already exhibiting and um, and doing shows, but you know, for young artists still, like and uh, you know, producing things in Los Angeles, like working with fabricators that do uh, that work in, for the like, Hollywood studios, you know, like there comes a time where like your budget isn't really uh, does it doesn't like your budget and your ideas, like you know, you start making a lot of compromises and you don't really kind of. Uh, get to do what you really want to do um, to kind of cut corners. So, you know, when I went to Guadalajara and I and and you know Jose Noé, this amazing guy, was like, he's like, what do you want to make? And he's like, I was like, I don't know, you know, I want to make this. And he's like, do you want to make a hundred of them? And it's like, oh, like I can I make a hundred of these? It's like, yeah. Do you want to make it bigger? And it's like, of course I want to make it bigger. And just this kind of like creative process started happening where everything just seemed like all the possibilities were. Uh, um, uh, were there and um, and really didn't have like uh, like anything that had to do with with um, with editing my thoughts or my ideas. Um, you know the spaces in Guadalajara are incredible. It's uh, it's a it's a big city. Um, there's beautiful um, studio spaces which you know we all kind of like um, you know we we all have and we work. And also there's an amazing uh, artist community which is you know super supportive. And um, you know it was it's small it was small and but it's getting bigger and bigger and a lot of artists are, are coming from different cities and different parts of the world. Well, I, I haven't worked anywhere else, so I, I'm not. Um, but I guess uh, what Guadalajara being a very large city, there's also a sense of having space and time to think, which is something that I and to observe, which is something that I really appreciate and need for my work. And so you have all of these um, materials and um, workshops, uh, uh, but also, and, and the city that is moving, moving really fast, but you can also just move uh, half an hour away and you have um, a lake or you can go to the, the mountains or the woods. Um, I think, um, and we have a, an amazing weather, so I think there's many, um, many things that really help with the creative process. It's also a place where violence is growing. Uh, uh, there's, there's many uh, different and contrasting uh, things that are in conflict that, um, that I reflect upon. And, um, well, all of this, and, and I mean, and my work is, is the result of, of the context that, and what I live daily. So. So all of these elements uh, merge and, and turn into or, uh, or are always, or, or this ima these images or these references that you were talking about before and, and, and influences of different um, 
um, writers or, I mean, everything just overlaps and um, is, is there after, in the work, I think. Um, I think for me, being back in Guadalajara just like kind of freed up my practice. Like being in the States where um, I think the art education is it's very politicized and it's a lot about identity politics. So I kind of felt like being here, I was one of the only Mexicans in my program and a lot of my work was about being Mexican. Um, and that started feeling really like heavy to carry on. So I think um, going back to Guadalajara for me was like allowing myself to work from a place um, of affection and just being close to these people and like um, that I care deeply about and have these like um, affective relations to the paintings and how I go from one painting to the other. So I think that was just like a shift that occurred when I went back to Guadalajara and that I'm really happy um, that it happened because I don't know, I think, and also like answering your second question, I think. Um, in the exhibition, you can see all these different practices and all the different interests and materials that artists have in our city. And to just, in that way, kind of like speaking again to identity politics, it like it expands what people expect um, to be produced in our city. So I think it's it's really nice to be in a city like Oklahoma and like bring all these work and different generations of artists together to show the, the depth and the like breadth of them of our culture, I guess. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I've always been in Guadalajara also. Um, uh, I think I started being an artist after graduating from architecture. Um, so at first I did, my, my work was, was a lot of um, based on site-specific installations. So in that sense, the city was not that important for me because uh, the, the site-specific installations are more like ideas you create in, in different places where you get invited or... Uh, and then I started to, then after the years, I started to produce more uh, studio work. And, uh, and I think that's where, where, where Eduardo was saying, and it's very easy to produce in Mexico. Um, uh, you know, like like the, the the pieces that I do with steel in other places would be very difficult to 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 produce. And, and in Mexico, I have a friend that is is my welder, and I just call him, and he's always there for me. He's, 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 there's a a thing in Mexico that it's easier to to do things. I feel. Okay, so for me. It is very important to be in Guadalajara because I, I work hand, like hand in hand with artisans. And um, as, as we said before, uh, Jose Noé Suro, uh, he has this factory which is almost like, a, yeah, um, like Toys R Us for adults. Like everything can happen. He never says no. And, it's such a big opportunity, and I also do blown glass, and it's it's a it's traditional from 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 Tonala. I I wouldn't know where to do it in in another place, and also I like I like it that it feels right now that it's um, that we have our own thing going on, and that we don't depend like on the capital, and I think it, it was such a like a big step for. Uh, Jose, Jorge, uh, Gonzalo, not to leave the city because before, like like the like the um, cultural capital always went to New York or to Mexico City, like to search for other bigger opportunities, and they were the first generation that like stayed and opened so many channels because uh, people were coming in from the states just like to make studio visits and stuff like that. So I think it's very important um, to, I don't know, to represent your city, to be there and, and to try and think like what can you give back to the city, not, what, not only what you can take. So for me, it's very important. Like I, I do feel very proud of being 
from Guadalajara. And also, um, what was the other question? Uh, Oklahoma, <laughs> sorry. I, it's too much. Um, <laughs> um, I think it is, it is very representative of what is happening in Guadalajara, this show. So it's like a, a, like a glimpse of what was going on down there. And I think it's very exciting to see all of the pieces together. Um, I think there's like, a, I don't know, it's, everybody's work is very different, but it is representative of, of what we're doing. So maybe people get excited and come to Guadalajara to check it out or something like that. So yeah. In your case, Carmen, that you don't work or produce in Guadalajara, but I have always returned to Colotlan either to work or to or to gain um, inspiration from the from the surroundings. Almost all my production is about growing up in Colotlan. And I think that's a political statement because I see it as uh, the local and the specificities of myself against the, the global, the universal, the homogenizing. So for me, it's, it's political and in respect in about the other question, sometimes I'm worried about uh, how the, the, the audience is going to read my work, because sometimes I think that it's so specific. I don't know if they're going to have the context to understand it. Well, in Mexico, um, I think it's easier, uh, but I don't know if it's enough context. Um, but. I don't know, I remember some references, like, um, I'm not proud that it's a male, male author, but like, La uh, Jaula de la Melancolía, that says how the, the Mexican from the city sees the Mexican from the rural areas, that it's like times, it's not passing, there's nothing happening in the in the rural areas but i am interested in in the uh, conception of time in if it is uh, slower or it's interesting what you are saying because you say it's a site um, how did you say it? Uh, very specific artists were specific not site specific yeah no super specific but it's interesting because these paintings being abstract i think that can relate to many other uh, um, contexts so i think that that shouldn't be a worry for you for example i don't know I, for example, I, I have another project that is uh, called Peripherical Land Art, and it's, uh, about, it's two photographs of an advertisement of a drugstore. It's in the, in the river of Colotlan, but uh, it's uh, constructed by leathers made, by, made of uh, concrete. And it's like a piece of land art, like the when the the rain in the rain season, it's not possible to read the the lettering. The lettering, uh -huh. it's like um, spiral jetty, I think, but it's it's like a small gesture, like what's what's land art like. White, white male artists penetrating nature, and I'm just taking a photograph of something that it's already there and in a peripheral place. <laughs> Very well. I don't know if you have anything else to say, or should we pass the microphone to the audience? Thank you. We have time for one question. <laughs> Who has a really good one that they've been itching to ask? No? 
Okay, they've said everything. You've said everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Viviana Curry. We can clap. Uh, and thank you, thank you to all the artists. Um, it's been a fabulous week here with all of you and your energy and, and the art um, that you've brought to this space. And um, you know, Oklahoma's called the Big Friendly. That's like, I think that's one of the names that they call it, the Big Friendly. And so you're welcome back here anytime. Um, we're happy to have you and hope to see you next time. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you.